Hello Explorers, welcome to Exploration Place. My name's Beth and we're going to do a lesson today on bird beaks, adaptations that animals have to survive in the environment. Now, birds that are best adapted will survive. They will produce offspring and pass on those traits to their offspring. If the environment changes, those again that are best suited will adapt. An example of this is the Galapagos finches. Now, there's a couple that has been studying this finches for four, over 40 years. It's a long time. But in nature, we usually think of changes taking thousands of years. Well, what they found during a drought, when there wasn't much water, most of the finches died off, except for those that had a specialized beak, and they survived, and they passed that trait onto their offspring. So, bird beaks, we don't think about it a lot. But there are over 18,000 species of birds out in the world that have been discovered. So, I have Ollie the owl here. He has a very pointed, sharp beak. He's a carnivorous bird. In fact, here at the top, eagles, vultures, falcons, those are carnivorous birds. They eat meat. They might eat rats or mice, snakes. I've seen one flying, a hawk flying across the sky with a snake dangling from its talons. They might dive into the water to get a fish. Other birds, granivorous, they eat grain, seeds. I throw out bird food for my birds that live near my house. And they come and they eat. They just pick it up. They have short little beaks. Another type of bird beak is frugivorous. Isn't that pretty? The parrot, macaw, those tropical birds, they pick fruit, they open it up, and eat the seeds and the flesh. Okay, so they're frugivorous. Here, another very pretty one, insectivorous. This one's called a bee eater, which I just can't imagine eating a bee. But it has a very long pointy beak. Others you may have heard of, swifts, swallows, robins. That first robin in the spring is always very exciting. Now, this is one of my favorite. It's pink, it's pretty, and it has a spoon bill. It's called a spoon bill. They will, they're wading birds and they scoop up things in the water. Small organisms, little crustaceans, shellfish. Storks are also spoon wading birds. Piscivorous, that's a funny word. These are birds that dive into the water and will stab fish. Storks, albatross, I'm sorry, storks are up here. Albatrosses, seagulls, Herons, we have lots of herons around here. They ate some of my fish in my pond one time. They stabbed them. Filter feeding birds. Everybody loves the flamingo. Pretty pink stands on one leg. Swans, ducks are also filter feeding birds and they strain food. And then the last one here I have in my pictures is nectivorous. They eat the nectar from a flower. Hummingbirds are those, and it's so exciting if you can see a hummingbird because they're so small and they fly, their wings go so fast, and they have to have a lot of nectar. And they help populate and pollinate other flowers. So they're very important species. So, what is the function of that beak? Well, some birds defense, they fight, if you've ever seen some geese, they'll peck at you. Or mating, the puffin has a colorful beak and that helps attract the females. Regulating their body temperature. Toucans, like Toucan Sam with the cereal. Toucans, they have blood vessels that flow through their beak and if they're too hot, they open up and release that heat. Or if their body temperature is too low, they constrict, which means they get smaller and they hold in the heat. They use their beaks to help build nests. See a lot of those right now here in the spring. And then feeding. And that's what we're going to do. We are going to build bird beaks from household materials. And the measure of our bird's success is how much food they can collect in a certain amount of time because we are going to look at then if they can reproduce or not. So we have this table here and you have that accessible along with your list of materials. If it takes 40 ants 
to produce one offspring. So our materials look like this. I just brought some things from home, clothespins. Here's a different kind of clothespin. I found these in my closet. Those could be used. A lot of people are doing takeout. You might have some forks and spoons, plastic ones. I even thought a cup could be used, makes noise too, kind of fun, could be used as your beak. Now, I had a plate. Now, I don't know if this would work too well because its curved surface might not be so great. You may have some tongs at home. Try and avoid using them. This would be a funny bird that eats sideways though. And very importantly, scissors and tape. So when I was working on this, I made some different beaks. I like some of them, some of them not so much. Here I used some masking tape, some cardboard, plastic spoon and fork. They don't close all the way. That would be hard to hold on. Or this one looks cool. It's nice and bright. It might be that filter feeder, but it again doesn't close all the way. Could I change this and maybe put them coming together? We could try that. Another one, I used a paper clip in here so to open it up. That would be a mean bird with its forks. Here are a couple others. I like this one kind of. We'll see maybe on that one. And this is the last one I made to try. So, you're gonna need to make a beak. Make it your own, okay? If somebody's at home, a sibling, a parent wants to do this with you, they can. You can make it a competition. You're also going to need some food. And again, make sure you ask permission before you use something. You need five types of food. You might find some pasta or rice at home. I used cut up straws. Those are my ants. Grubs, grubs grow in the ground. Eat your grass roots. I had some old marshmallows. They're kind of stale. So moms probably will give those up. Yarn makes good worms. Yours doesn't have to be the same as mine. It probably won't be because my bugs are these peanuts that are candy coated. I've had them too long in my cabinet, so I use those. And then I found, I have some pool noodles and that's my fruit. So, and then you need a timer. So again, make sure you ask permission before you gather things, but go out, build your beak and gather your food. And we'll come back and we'll test and experiment, see how your beak does. Welcome back, explorers. It's time to eat. So I have my bird beak that I'm gonna test out. I'm gonna start with ants. You should have five containers of food along with your bird beak, something to jump it onto. It could be a plate, a tray, a cookie sheet, okay? And then something to collect the food eaten. Now, if you drop it or spill it somewhere, it doesn't count, but we're gonna count those out. So I have, here's my ants, okay? And I have my timer. I have 20 seconds on it. I'm gonna try and eat my ants with my bird beak. Okay, the timer is starting. Okay, my bird beak is not very good. I cannot get it and I can't scoop it up because the bird isn't gonna turn over its head unless it is a little scary. So I am not, I have five, four seconds, so I'm not getting any food, no ants for me. Okay, bird beak. Maybe questionable. Don't change it yet, though. So I'm gonna put all my ants back in my original bowl over here that says ants. I like my little cut up straws. They're kind of fun. And we'll put a zero in the ant spot. Now, what's the problem with not eating? I'm hungry, I'm not as healthy, and I don't make offspring. So, my fruit. We're gonna scatter my fruit here. I have some pink and green fruit. I'm sure the pink is delicious. So, starting my timer here again in a moment and try and eat my fruit. Gather it up. 
Okay, so starting the timer. Okay, not as easy as it looks. I got one, yay! Oh, don't waste time. Get a green, I'm sure it's minty fresh. <sighs> Gotta get it over here. Now to get it off my beak. Okay, again, another one. I'm running low on time. <sighs> okay, I got three. Now, we'll put that in our chart with the fruit food. Now, what I want you to do at home is to continue doing this and see if you can eat enough food to produce offspring. I haven't yet, okay? So, take some time. You don't adjust it. After we're done, you can adjust your beak and see and test it again. Welcome back, explorers. I hope you've been ha having fun eating your food with your bird beak. Did you eat enough to produce offspring? Well, I got one. I, the grubs were easy for my beak to eat. Those were my grubs, my marshmallows. I didn't get much of any on the, what was that, bugs. So it was a problem. My beak wasn't great. Now, if you only produce one to two offspring in a year, your population will probably not be very healthy and it may not survive. You need to produce at least four or more offspring every year because keep in mind in nature, Ollie the owl may come eat your bird. So, what do you think of your beak? Was it a great design? I don't think mine was. So while we were gone, I took and modified it a little bit. I added another stick. See what would happen. Now this time, so if I put my grubs out, I was successful with those. And 20 seconds, let's see how many I can get. Oh yeah, it's working well. That modification, I'm so excited. I'm having a hard time picking them up. Oh my goodness, whoops. Uh, if I, oh, if I dropped that one, that doesn't count. Didn't get back to the nest. Oh, I'm almost out of time, get one more. Okay, well this time wasn't as good as last time. I only got four, six of them because this one dropped, okay? I can only count that. So I want you to take some time, and again, if you're doing this with a brother or sister or a parent, that's great, make it a competition. But go back, Either redesign your beak like I did by adding a second stick in this case, or you can really do redesign and do a whole new beak. Then, once you've done that, test your food again. Fill in the chart with your second beak version. See what happens. And we'll come back and wrap up here in just a few minutes. Hello, explorers. We're so glad you're here again today. Let's look at your results. My results, I redesigned my bird beak, I extended the bottom stick, and I had a little bit more success. I had two offspring, woohoo! Now, here I have another one. This one's really good, but you can continue doing this activity, modifying your bird beaks, do it as a competition. The big thing is that you learn from this that nature favors those organisms that are best adapted. The bird beak is just an example of one way you can examine, explore this area. What type of food was it good at eating? Well, it varies depending on what you have. What if, you know, this one's pretty good. What if I ate all my bugs? Then I would have to resort to another food type. You can't eat up everything that's there in your habitat and survive. So play with this, modify your beak, modify your food, enjoy and explore because that's what we're here for. So have a great day and enjoy. Hashtag us and let us know what you found out.